you know, you really told a wild story, man. I also read about it in your book mm -hmm. about the night that Big Jake was killed. Yeah. Can you kind of take me through it? All right. Now, we got this club. Not we got this club. Some associates of mine have a club. They had a club. And so I worked the front door at the club all the time. I didn't work like it was my job. I worked because this is where I just like to be. I, I, I had the responsibility of making, checking IDs, because it was a lot of, you know, Atlanta was a college town. So around this time, a lot of the college kids that were underage wanted to come into the club. So I would check the IDs and everything at the front of the door. That's my job. So I'm at the job working one day, and we got this function going on for Jermaine Dupri. It's his birthday, September 23rd, 1995. And um, so I'm at the door. I see a limb. I see everybody in the club. Uh, Puff in the club. Wolf and them is in the club. Jermaine Dupri is in the club. Dallas Austin is in the club. Man, G is in the club. All the rim shop is in the club. So we there, and then so I saw when Shug pulled up, they pulled up in the limo, and then Jake got out and walked into the club. I let him in. Then he came back out, and then when he came back out, him and Shug came into the club together. So when I saw them coming into the club, then I let them in. They walked in. So I'm still in the front of the club. So. I walk inside the club after, you know, things are slowing up outside. I walked in the club and then I saw Jake on the, uh, on the, right by the bar on the dance floor right there. And he was arguing with my friend's wife and he was arguing and I'm, she's from California and she knew Jake and Suge from California because she came from uh, the same kind of neighborhood as them in California, as in Compton. So he came in there and Jake was like, this is Bompton Pyro. He, he's talking to H Puff Security, Wolf. Wolf is talking to my friend's wife because at the club we had Bad Boy Fridays. So every Friday we, we would have a Bad Boy party and the promoter was Wolf. So he was promoting these parties at the club. So Jake was saying to her, oh, um, you throwing all of these East Coast parties, all these, all these bad boy parties, like you, you sucking these East Coast niggas. Mm. That was disrespectful. And when he said that, that was like a form of diss to my friend. Um, so earlier that day when he came in and he went and did his rounds and that's when G saw my friend G saw everything that he saw which is the the slap where he say Jermaine Dupri but I wasn't there to see that witness myself and even if I did see that I wouldn't have liked the fact that he put his hands on Jermaine because Jermaine is like one of the hometown favorites here so it's not any form of disrespect when that story is there. It's a form of high respect because I didn't like it. And then so he had his, his words with Puff. And um, so we downstairs and they come out this little room that they had upstairs. They went in and, and, and they were talking in this, just like a room that we used to have upstairs that they used to gamble in. And um, they went in there and they came outside of this room and everything seemed like everything was all peace. And so they walked downstairs and my, my guy is, is, is kind of like telling them, you know, we got to get out, they, you know, they got to leave the club. And when they were leaving the club, when they were arguing, I saw a guy that I knew, he was from New York and he was, he was at the bar. He finished his drink like this and I already knew him. I knew him like very well because every night when the club would close, he would come and knock on the door to buy like three bottles of Cristal. And this time Cristal was like $195, $200 a bottle. So I would purposely stay at the club late night so when he knocked, I could make that extra couple of hundred dollars off of selling him some bottles. So when he, he, he left and when he left and 
Jake was coming out the club and Suge was coming out the club. Puff was right there with Suge and they were walking out. And then all of a sudden, you seen the guy who left from the bar from New York, he left. And then you seen him standing there and he was shooting Jake. And I was standing right next to Jake, but being that I knew who the, who the shooter was, I knew he wasn't going to miss. And he was just close enough to do it, handle what he was doing. So I sat there and I looked and I was watching and I saw him do it and I saw him leave. But what you you said something about in the book you talked about he was like looking at Suge like your neck. Yeah, he was looking no, nah, he was looking when he was shooting Jake, he was looking at Suge to say, This should have been you. But he couldn't shoot Suge because Suge had grabbed Puff and he had Puff in a in like a chokehold in front of him. So as the guy was shooting, he couldn't shoot Puff. I mean Suge because he would have shot Puff. So he was using uh, Suge grabbed Puff and was using him as a human shield. Yes. In which you, you know, um, there's so many different cases where, we, where you know about Suge using people as human shields. He used females as human shields. <laughs> That's just how Suge was. Anything pop off, he gonna grab anybody else around him and put him in front of him. If he in a car, if y'all shoot the car, y'all gonna shoot these girls first. That's just Suge using a human shield. So that night, he happened to grab Puff as a human shield. And um, so um, well, what happens? Does he drag? He drags Puffy back into the club. What they, is Puffy saying? He went saying? back into the club. He went back in the club, and he kept saying, "Damn, damn, damn!" And then Puff was like, "It's gonna be all right." And he was like, "What you mean it's gonna be all right?" He said, "I know it's gonna be all right. You tell your mama it's gonna be all right. You tell your kids it's gonna be all right." And then it was an argument, and then he was like, "Puff." Suge, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Suge, I ain't got nothing to do with that. And true indeed, Puffy didn't have nothing to do with that. Um, Jake had came in there tripping, and it was a lot of things that was going on between Jake and the people that he may have known, that he may have known them before they were in Atlanta, however it go. But um, after he escorted them out, then we were outside, and then Suge was like, um, he was yelling at Puff. And then um, at the end, Jake was dying. And so it was some guys that walked by and was like, you know, they was like, damn. And they looked at everybody. They was like, they saw Jermaine Dupree. They saw, they saw everybody. You know, Dallas, I don't know if Jermaine was still there, but they saw Dallas, Puff, and Suge. And they looked and they was like, every time I see y'all, I see death. The only thing I see is people around y'all dying all the time. And he said, y'all sitting here going back and forth talking about it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. What about this man right here on the ground that's dying? When are y'all going to get together and at least say a prayer for this man? He's dying. So then we grabbed hands and then we got into a prayer circle. And then uh, a few days after that, Jake died in the hospital. That's how the yeah. story of Jake. But that was before I was an artist on Bad Boy. That that incident happened when I, I wasn't even signed to Bad I, Puff didn't even, I don't even think he remembered that that was me. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe. And stay locked in to Cam Capone News.